Ah, I have so much tech news to give you, but I don't know if you're ready. Some of it may unsettle you, cause you some discomfort, might make you feel a little bit woozy. Intel is reportedly working to finalize commitments from NVIDIA to have Team Blue's foundry division manufacture Team Green's gaming GPUs, an eerily perfect setup for the tech industry version of the Red Wedding from Game of Thrones. And Team Red isn't even involved. Intel, no, get out of there! The news comes from industry analyst Timothy Arcuri, who wrote in a note to investors that securing foundry customers like NVIDIA, or less likely Broadcom, is a major goal of the company's new CEO, Lip Bhutan. Even if NVIDIA doesn't love the idea of having their chips made by a competitor in the gaming GPU market, to be extremely charitable towards Intel, the deal could make sense if only to avoid the tariffs US President Trump may still place on chips made by NVIDIA's existing partner, TSMC. And who knows, maybe Intel could help NVIDIA stock more than like four graphics cards at each retailer. Scalping and supply issues are part of why AMD sold 10 times more RX 9070 XTs in the first week than its predecessors. Or at least, that's what CEO Dr. Lisa Su said in an interview with ASUS China. I gotta say, I did not have Radeon graphics cards are dominating the market, so Nvidia and Intel have to team up to take them down on my 2025 bingo card. Because I don't have a bingo card at all, that's gambling. Lots of notable AI developments this week with the arrival of new Gemini 2.5 thinking models from Google DeepMind that the company says are mighty powerful, by which they mean they're just slightly better on some common benchmarks. But a new benchmark could show that all the AI suck. Hold on, that's for the end of the story. OpenAI finally rolled out native image generation for ChatGPT's 4O model, meaning it no longer needs to use DALI for that. The update has made ChatGPT shockingly good at reproducing text in generated images while maintaining the consistency of characters and environments through multiple iterations. It's a feature that OpenAI has apparently been holding on to since 4O was unveiled nearly a year ago. I guess they decided to wait until two weeks after Google launched the same thing in Gemini. Badoom, gotcha. Notably, guardrails for these image generators have been loosened. OpenAI's system card for GPT-40 says they're not blocking the capability to generate public figures as long as they're adults. And public figures who wish for their depiction not to be generated can opt out. I didn't see how uh, in the document. I guess try DMing Sam. Guess what, there's more. NVIDIA is now rolling out Project G Assist. It's AI assistant that can run locally on your GPU and is apparently named after the company's fake AI assistant from their April Fool's joke in 2017. Eight years from parody to reality, is this normal? The real G Assist won't play games for you, but in addition to giving gaming tips, it can actually control third party accessories like wall lights and even change some of your PC settings if you ask it to, instead of just telling you that you can open the settings app then find and enable dark mode. Uh, and how did NVIDIA make a more useful AI assistant for Windows PCs than Microsoft? <laughs> Meanwhile, chatbot service character.ai, which is very popular among teens, as evidenced by all those uplifting articles about the things it's done, has announced a new parental insights feature, which lets users under 18 send a weekly activity report to their parent or guardian if they want to. Uh, <laughs> It's parental controls for the good kids that don't need them. Now, in case you're worried that AI is getting too smart too fast, there's a new benchmark, Arc AGI 2, which requires fluid intelligence to complete novel tasks instead of testing AIs on their ability to solve problems that are probably in their training data somewhere. And nearly every model is horrible at this new test. So we should have some time left before we all feel the AGI in the form of robot feet on our neck.
Right now, we can feel the savings with our sponsor. Micro Center and their Monitor Madness event that's on right now with great deals on a wide range of monitors. From this Acer Nitro 2K 180Hz for just $199.99 to this Samsung Odyssey QD OLED Super Ultra Wide that's $700 off. It's mad, mad I tell you. And Micro Center is opening another store in Santa Clara, California so you can shop deals like that in person? That's almost as mad as giving people who sign up at the link below a free 128 gig flash drive in store when it opens this year. What, they're doing that? As if that wasn't enough, Micro Center's also running a GPU trade-in program, so you can bring in your GPU purchased at Micro Center and receive an offer that very same day. Or if you just want to recycle your old tech or donate it to someone in need, Micro Center can help with that too. They even got tech news articles, tutorials, and buying guides on their blog. They're like a Swiss army knife over here. Shop Micro Center's Monitor Madness event at the link in the description. Did that news disquiet, disturb, or perturb you? I'm sorry. These quick bits should feel much better entering your ocular and auditory orifices. Why did I say it like that? Asrock had Asrock? Every time. ASRock has published a slightly confusing update after investigating issues experienced by some owners of the company's motherboards. While ASRock acknowledged some of its BIOS versions caused boot issues with, quote, random 9000 series CPUs, they say their new BIOS 3.20 fixes that issue, and it's not related to the other issue that caused burn damage on the CPU socket. Uh, they didn't exactly say what could have caused multiple users to report burnt CPUs and pins on the motherboard, but implied it was caused by debris in the socket, which they removed, uh, leading to the system passing long-term stress tests. So there was just some, you know, stuff. <laughs> Unfortunately for ASRock, many are still calling for further investigation as there was something in there, in it is a less than satisfying answer. What was it? Oh, I know some variety of gunk. <laughs> some promising Windows 11 features have popped up in a new preview build, including a controller-friendly keyboard and, more importantly, an improved Windows search, which will only be available on Copilot Plus PCs because I guess Microsoft needed advanced neural networks to make search almost as useful as it was in Windows 7. Apple has once again been barred from participating in Google's upcoming antitrust hearing after an appeals court denied the tech giant's motion to testify about how much it would suck for them to lose the $20 billion Google pays them every year to be Safari's default search engine. This is so sad. They just wanna to be together for the hearing and conduct shady deals. I ship them. Canada has banned Tesla from receiving any federal electric vehicle rebates in the future, weeks after the company filed for $43.1 million in rebates, claiming that four of its Canadian stores had sold 8,653 vehicles in three days. That would be 120 EVs per hour. <laughs> The sales all happened the weekend before a previously announced pause in the EV rebates program. So I can understand why all those Canadians rushed to get one before the deadline. <laughs> and a company called Gravitix has been awarded funding by the US Space Force to develop what is essentially an aircraft carrier in space. Awesomely referred to as an orbital carrier, the craft would actually hold, maintain, and release satellites into orbit which would save on having to launch them from Earth. However, the company didn't say they wouldn't also be used eventually for transporting squadrons of starfighters, so I'm considering that a feature that's coming later on. Also arriving later, more tech news on Friday, specifically, because that's when tech news happens next. Because that's when I make the tech news happen. I think that's how it works. <laughs>